Hey, DJ here, I hope you're doing fine. Today we'll be looking at a budget condenser microphone that you can use not just with your camera, but also with your smartphone. First, we'll take a look at what's in the box, a uh, quick look at the specs, and then we'll do a quick indoor test, outdoor test, and then maybe we can also compare it with my other microphones. So five things, let's begin. Before we proceed with the sound test, I'd like to note that I have a carpet on the floor, a bed to my side as well as pillows, but unfortunately we still have echo in this room. Right now I have the microphone connected directly to the camera and it's sitting about two feet away from me and I have the gain set light. So setting the gain this low will result to a lower volume or audio level overall and that may sound counterproductive, but it will also mean that you're capturing less background noise or less room noise. So that means cleaner audio that you can tweak around in post. Now, if you really have a lot going on in your recording environment, say you have an air conditioner or a heater that's humming, you may want to have your microphone closer to you by placing it in a monopod, a boom arm, a friction arm, or what have you, just as long as it has a cold shoe mount or a quarter inch screw. If you don't have it already, you may need to purchase a 3.5 millimeter TRS cable, or as it's most commonly referred to as the aux cable. This is a common cable that you can even see in a conven convenience store in a gas station in the car accessories department. The reason being is that the one that ships with the microphone can only go so far. <laughs> now, and if you're gonna boom this microphone up to your side or anywhere closer to you, this this won't work. Now, if you're using it with your smartphone, make sure that you get an extension cable that is that has TRRS on one end. I think this is also a good opportunity to test the proximity effect on this microphone as well as its polar pattern or how it picks up sound from directions other than the front. Now, in theory, proximity effect should lead to more bass as I am closer and lose that bass as I move farther and farther away. Now I'll be testing the polar pattern. I'm turning the microphone. I am on the side. Now I am 180 degrees. Turning, turning, and right back in front. Now let's test if I have another person speaking beside me or on the back of the microphone. This is how the microphone picks up sound if I have another person beside me speaking at roughly the same volume as I am. Now I'll move the theoretical person to the back of the microphone, about one foot away from the back of the microphone. This is how the sound is. Now you're hearing audio from the microphone connected directly to the iPad via a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter uh, cable. Uh, here I have a Venture Electronic one. What you use might affect the sound, but if you're using a name brand like say the one that comes from Apple, you should be good to go. Now if you want to use this for say a conference call, you might need to have a Bluetooth headphone to hear what the other person is saying or you might need an audio in and out splitter here so you could connect a headphone to the whole setup because this microphone doesn't have a headphone out. Another option would be to connect uh, an audio interface to your iPad, but that's quite cumbersome. So I guess the Bluetooth option would be the most ideal. Microphone are about two feet, one and a half feet away from me. And this is how it sounds. If I bring it a little closer, now this is how it sounds. Now here's a quick outdoor sound test of the microphone. I have it at arm's length with the dead cat on, and then I have the gain set at auto as well as the attenuator. So let me know what you think of this sound. I'm in between two rather busy streets, and then we have some wind picking up, so we can hear how this mic holds up. There are many ways to measure sound objectively, like frequency graphs, but to me at least, I think sound is really subjective. It just depends on what sounds good to you, plus everyone's ears are different. That being said, I think this is a good microphone, with the short time that I've had with it. I wish it had a little more low end, just because that's what I prefer with my voice, 
but that is easy to fix in post. <laughs> I just need to remember to keep my gain low on the camera. Plus the super cardioid polar pattern is miles ahead from the mic I previously had, which is an omnidirectional microphone, meaning it picks up sound from all directions. <laughs> If I really wanted to have the best possible voiceover for my projects, for my YouTube videos, I will still resort to this XLR mic. It's the Samsung QTU going to the Moto M2 audio interface. Unfortunately, I can't give a direct comparison between the two microphones as I don't have the proper adapters to use the Comica mic with my setup. I only have this guy, but it doesn't work. So I think I might need an XLR to 3.5 adapter. Let me know if you have any solutions for it. However, for a run and gun solution and probably for the majority of my projects, my YouTube videos, I would use this be just because it uh, lends to a simplified workflow. I don't have to sync audio, whatnot. Now, some of you are probably wondering how this compares to the Rode Video Micro <laughs> IM2. Unfortunately, I have never tested that microphone, so I can't say anything on that end. I'd love to though. It has an aluminum body with a removable cap on the end if you really want to tinker with it. And I think it will hold up as long as you don't subject it to anything rigorous, especially this plastic uh, mount. Now the foam is okay. The dead cat, however, is like a real cat. It sheds a lot. Good thing they provide you with a hard case too, so as not to make a mess in your bag and protect the mite as well from getting crushed with heavy lenses and heavy cameras. I've only used this microphone a handful of times, including this video, so I can't really say anything on longevity. But as always, I'll leave an update in the description or in the comments if I run into any issues. We're almost at the end, but I forgot to mention the price. So this retails for around $40 to $50, but I often see it below that. I actually got this for $34, and for what I paid, I think I got a good deal, considering the amount of accessories that it came with, as well as the quality. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this microphone as well as the bajillion other microphones that look like the Rode Video Micro. And one more thing, I don't really wanna talk about this, but 99.9% .9 of viewers aren't subscribed. Maybe you can help skew the numbers a little. It would be amazing if we reached 200 subscribers by the end of this year. That would make me feel great and productive. <laughs> Just kidding. On a serious note though, if you could leave a positive comment for others to read, that would be extremely amazing. Could be, could maybe go along the lines of, uh, hello stranger, I hope you have a great day. Or hello stranger, I know you'll get through this. Something along, along those lines. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and see you on the next one.